you ever see the man before who said he was O'Hearn's lawyer? Well, uh... But go ahead, speak freely. This is Mr. O'Connor of the Department of Justice. No, sir. I never saw Mr. O'Hearn's visit before. What did he look like? Well, medium, right? Tall. And he had a briefcase in his hand. <laughs> So you see, Inspector, all I have to do is look for a man of medium height, tall, with a briefcase. Everybody in that jail must be deaf, dumb, and blind to let a thing like this happen. You can go. That gang's been knocking over small banks all over the city. I arrest one of the mob. Get him identified. I put him in jail. And some killer walks in and murders him. Fine breaks I get. <laughs> Your blood pressure, Inspector. Now, what do you want? The mayor calling. More grief. Yes, Macy speaking. Yes, but I realize the light this puts the department in, but I'm doing everything that I can, but... Now I've got him on my neck. What's that? That's the report I received on the bullet they dug out of her hand. It's a 38 caliber automatic manufactured by Royal. We should have somebody check with the royal people, then cover all the pawn shops in town. I want all the information I can get. What else can I do for you, Mr. O'Connor? Nothing, nothing, Inspector. Your department, if you'll pardon the observation, have been a trifle overzealous. Listen, Mr. O'Connor, you're from the Department of Justice. You've been after these bank bandits for weeks. You find O'Hearn is one of the gang. I pick him up. And I'd have made him talk, too, if this thing hadn't happened. That's just it. What else could you expect? I didn't ask you to pick up O'Hearn. See, you work one way, Macy. The Department of Justice works another. I'd have been able to find the men higher up if you hadn't jugged O'Hearn. They didn't dare let him talk. It'd have cracked this gang wide open. You Why, he... You can't get away with this. It'll cost you your job. Listen, you can't get away with this. Nobody in the United States can get away with it. We picked him off a train coming in from Frisco. Frisco? Certainly. I was getting off a train coming in from Frisco, minding my own business, and what happens? Forget it. Go ahead. See what you can do with him. Nope. Won't do any good now. He's your man, Inspector. You were O'Hearn's lawyer? Not this time. I was in Frisco on a case. Check on that. Yes, what sort of a case? A Chinaman by the name of Yang Fu shot his mother-in-law. Check on that. Did O'Hearn call your office? No, sir. Then who did O'Hearn call? <laughs> Maybe that was the Marines. Check on that. Get him out of here before I lose my temper. Hold him as a material yes, witness. Yeah, well, the United States will pay for this. You can't get away with this junk. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't get you. You wanted that lawyer picked up? Certainly, before you grabbed O'Hearn. Now that O'Hearn's dead, I can't do any good with his lawyer. All right, all right. Where do we go from here? Well, that, Inspector Macy, is for me to find out. So long. Like the breakup of a hard winter. <laughs> <laughs> Do I? Well, I feel like it. Move over, will you, Bobby? I couldn't keep my mind on driving after this mix up. Why, what happened? I'll tell you. Well, hey, we'll just about have time to meet Kay if you'll step on it. Where to? The airport? That's right. Macy's destroyed every lead we were working on. fixed. He stopped too short. Put it on the cuff. Big lug. Hey, I didn't know you two were in town. Look who's here. Well, if it isn't the old candid photographer himself, how are you, Bob? Oh, I'm all right. Hey, look, the plane's in. Some of the fellas down at the office told me the Mogul of India was coming in. Thought I'd get a picture of him. <laughs> That's me. Always on the spot. Hello? Yes? Hey, mister. I want to take your picture. I don't want my picture. Yeah, yeah, right here against the wall. Look, look, look. Don't go away. Wait here just a minute. Oh. Hey, 
What's the big idea, you? Alan, <laughs> darling. I'm so glad to see you. Hello, Jed. I'm glad to see you, too. It's been ages since we've been together. <laughs> Seems like it, doesn't it? And you must be Bobby Reynolds. Alan's written about you so often. Surely not Alan. You mean he put that in writing? Oh, I may have mentioned it once or twice. <laughs> And now I want you to meet a friend of mine, Mr. Jerome Turner. Jerry, this is my brother, Mr. Alan O'Connor. How do you do, Mr. O'Connor? How do you do? And here's a... My co-worker, Miss Reynolds. How do you do? How do you do? And what do you think? He's an author, and he's going to write for the movies. What, no acting? Well, uh, not yet, but you never can tell. He was awfully nice to me on the trip. I've asked Miss O'Connor to have dinner with me tonight. I thought possibly Couldn't that... we all have dinner together, Alan? Just a sort of celebration not of our all being together or something. I guess we could. What do you say, Bobby? Anytime you mention the word eat, I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that's fine. I don't care what you say. I don't want my picture taken. Mr. I don't want my picture taken. It'll only take a second. I'll, I'll have it set up here in a minute. I, I tell you, I'm not from India. I came from Jersey City where I got a fish marker. But I tell you, the desk told oh, oh, Hey, oh, hey, oh, upstairs! Oh, oh, Help! <laughs> Help! What's the matter, Bob? Having some trouble? Oh, that man. He says he's not the mogul. Who is he? Isn't he cute? <laughs> Don't you call him cute. I saw him first. This is Bob, the candid photographer, and this is Kay O'Connor, Alan's sister. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. My poor Bob, the world's greatest ladies man. <laughs> Some of the boys back east told me about it. Said it's one of the show places of Hollywood. Do the stars come here? I don't know about that. You see, I wanted to come here for atmosphere. Any line on the man who shot O'Hearn? Not a thing. The whole gang's in the clear again. That leaves you right where you started from. Yep. Macy destroyed the whole line we were working on. Oh, well, let's forget business for a while. They make a cute couple, don't they? That sister of mine is a sweet kid, isn't she? Mm -hmm. She certainly is. It must be terribly thrilling to be a writer and get to go to all sorts of places after things to write about. Yes, I have been in a few tight places. Tell me about them. Some other time. You see, right now, I don't want to do anything but talk about you. Will you pardon me for a moment? I have a telephone call to make. Hurry back. I will. Isn't he wonderful? Now look, sweet, I don't want to spoil your fun. Oh, I know what you're going to say, and I won't let you. I know he's a stranger, but I like him. And there couldn't be anything wrong with him, so there. And that's that. I give up. <laughs> Hello, Claudie. Hello, my girl. When did you get in town? This afternoon. Nice little place you've got here. Thanks. Who are the people you're with? Friends of mine. Make friends quick, don't you? Look, Carlotti, you brought me out here to do a job for you. What I do or who I talk to besides that is none of your business. All right, all right, skip it. As you've probably noticed in the papers lately, somebody's been knocking off a few little banks out here. Yeah, I did read something about it. We were getting tired messing around with pin money. We want to expand a little. That's why I sent for you, McGurn. Okay, I'm here. What's on your mind? Have you ever been in Lone City, Nevada? No, it's a small burg up in the desert, isn't it? Yeah. It's a small burg, all right, but it's all set for a big take. 
There's a WPA camp up there. I've been working on the Grant Tunnel. I had one of the boys up there getting the layout. There's a $40,000 payroll coming in there, July the 10th. What are you going to do about it? The only place they can keep that money overnight is in the post office. Yeah, they got a jail, a post office, and a store all hooked under one building. Well? I say, listen, any stoop can pick the lock on that jail. Say, you seem to know all about it. Sure, I'm the guy that did the checking up for Joe. Was tossed into that jug a few weeks ago for being, what was it, Joe, a vagrant? Yeah, that means a tramp. You see, the sheriff don't like tramps. Won't let them stay in town, except overnight. And they have to spend that in jail. I see. Then all we do is get picked up for vagrancy. Yeah. See you later, Carlotti. <laughs> Here comes your author, kid. Sorry to have been so long. It's all right. Hello. How about giving me a break, Bobby? Some people are always looking for trouble. Well, I can handle it. Come on. I wonder. <laughs> Is all bottled up for the night? Sure. Can't nobody get in or out without being stopped. Well, good. I'm mighty glad you fellas helped me out tonight. You know, I wouldn't feel so good having to look after all that money in the post office by myself. You don't need to worry. It's just safe there as it is in the state bank. Folks are going to be feeling mighty good around here in the morning when they start to paying it all out. <laughs> Boy, this ought to be a cent. I told you so. <laughs> Hello, Sheriff. Thought you were gonna forget us. Well, it's again my principle to be feeding tramps. But human beings is human beings, and human beings has got to be fed. Here's some grub for us. Oh, thanks, Sheriff. Hey, you're a good scout after all, Pard. Don't call me, Pard. I ain't no partner to any dead burned vagrants. Go on, eat that grub, and I'll be seeing the two of you in the morning. Okay, Sheriff. Pleasant dreams, Pard. <laughs> Tell the boys back east about this. They'll never believe it. What'd I tell you? Well, 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 huh? This is the first time in my whole life that I've ever seen two tramps take the trouble to wash themselves. Good morning, Sheriff. Good morning, Pard. Uh, here's your breakfast, and I told you not to call me Pard, didn't I? Oh, thanks for the grub, Sheriff. Well, I guess I gotta be letting you two tramps out this morning. How'd you sleep last night? Oh, swell. Fine, fine. Huh? That's funny. You're the first ones ever did. You know, I've been wanting to change these mattresses here for the last two years. Must be awful hard and lumpy, ain't they? Oh, no, they're all right, sir. Oh, yes, they are, too. Oh, no. Just look at them there bumps. How is yours? Oh, perfectly okay, sir. Perfectly Good okay. Enough, but it's the same way. It lumps all over it. You know, I'm going to change them mattresses right away. 
Every man's entitled to a good night's sleep. Oh, Sheriff, those mattresses are all right. Really, they are. If we could sleep on them, anybody could. By the way, when are you going to let us out of here? Well, you're free now, young fella. But just go on and eat your breakfast. Oh, thanks, Sheriff. Then what happened? Well, I took a turn around the post office about midnight and found everything all right. Then I come on back here to my office and sit down in my chair and I, well, I guess I kind of, kind of dozed off after that. When did you first notice the money was missing? This morning. After I let them two tramps out, I took a look around and, and it was gone. Was this cell door locked? Well, certainly. Like always, leave it. You lock that in the outside? <laughs> well, as good as those two fellows was in jail last night, they're the only two people in town that had a perfect alibi. Exactly so, Sheriff. They had a perfect alibi. You notice these scratches around here? Why, a child could have picked this lock. Watch, and I'll show you how they did it. There. Well, I'll swan. Hmm. You see, Sheriff, it was a simple matter for them to pick their way out of here get the money in the post office, come back in the cell, and lock themselves in again. And as you say, they had a perfect alibi. They were safe in jail all night. Yeah, but how was I to know that? I remember asking how they slept last night and going over to feel their mattresses. I thought they'd look kind of hard and bumpy in places. Of course, that couldn't have been the missing money. See, maybe it could at that. Well, what happened to them after that? Well, I drove them out to the edge of town because they couldn't get by the guards. And I give each one of them a buck apiece and told them to beat it and never to come back here again. Don't worry, they won't. You got any trace of them after that, officer? No, sir. They just seem to disappear in the thin air. All right, all right. Well, let me know in Los Angeles if anything new turns up. I will. So long. You're positive you saw the couple pick up those two tramps? Sure. I had to go to Lone City for butter and eggs. I seen them with my own eyes. Thanks, Mac. That's all. Hello, kid. You find anything? I think so. A man and woman who rented a cabin here last night picked up a couple of hobos this morning coming from the direction of Lone City. Hmm. Those hobos couldn't have robbed the payroll. They didn't even look like they had car fare home. Notice their license number? Didn't have to. I always keep a record in my book. May we see it? Sure thing. Which cabin they take? That one over there. Mind if I take a look around? No. I ain't cleaned it up yet if you're thinking of renting it. <laughs> Maybe some other day. There it is. Biggest life. Oh, fine. Wait a minute, Natalie. I'll copy that down. Mr. and Mrs. Charles Endicott, Los Angeles, California, 7W7816. Get all the information? Yes, everything. Thanks very much for your help. We may drop around again someday. Our rates are cheap. Two dollars a night, clean sheets every day. <laughs> Thanks, I'll remember that. Come on, Bobby. Goodbye. Thank you very Bye. much. Goodbye. Bye. I got a pretty full description. See, I found something interesting myself. Look at that. Club call. Why, that's the place we were at the other night. You're a smart girl. Quiet, G-man. Carlotti? Sure, I know the place. But did it never occur to you that several thousand people go in and out of that club? That's right, Inspector. But does it seem logical that people frequenting expensive night spots and driving a big car would stay overnight in a cheap auto camp and pick up tramps along the way? You were asking me? I don't know. Well, it's a lead, that's all. Oh, what about their license number? We'll have a check made on that in no time. Anything else, Mr. O'Connor? Yes, one thing more. The bills used in that Lone City payroll were new and came from the Federal Reserve right here in Los Angeles. I've issued a general order to broadcast the serial numbers. Good. Then all we'll have to do is wait till one of them shows up. I sure hope it's the same mob that I'm after. I'd like to get my hands on them. You might. You don't work too fast. Good morning, Mr. Carlotti. Hello, Curtis. How's the banking business? 
Fine, fine. How's business with you? Couldn't be better. Will you check this over, please? There seems to be something wrong. All right, leave it here. You'll find quite a large deposit there. I'll pick up the passbook later. I'll attend to that. Say, I got a report on that Cadillac. The license plate is 7W7816. It belonged to the health commissioner. He reported it stolen a week ago. Say, if this case gets any screwier, you can look for me in the bug house. the Second National Bank and lay down a smoke screen. Oh, if I could just get... I'll take it. Hello, Inspector Macy's office. Fine, I'll be right out. Now what? Uh, they've got the Cadillac. What happened to the men in this car? Uh, ask him. He knows what it's all about. What's your name? Grind. What do you know about this car? How many times do I have to tell everybody? I'll write it down next. You'll cut out the white screen. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Tracy. I'll take care of this. Now, do you mind telling me what happened? Well, I own that farm over there. I was out back doing some work when I seen this here car drive up and three men jumped out of it. Where did they go? Well, my old Ford was in the lane, and before I knew what had happened, they snapped off the license plate, jumped in, drove away. How long ago was that? About a half hour. You sent out an order to pick up that Ford? Yes, sir. What did they look like? I don't know exactly, except one had a beard, and the man in the back seat was fat and wore a tweed sort of suit. What did the driver look like? Driver? Well, he was a little short fella, about five feet four. Well, thanks very much. Tracy, you better take that car back to headquarters and go over it for fingerprints. Sure. No at all? No. We've been all over it, and there ain't a fingerprint on it. Well, that's a great help. Thanks, anyway. You're welcome. Hello, gee, woman. You going somewhere? Looks like we're up against the old blank wall again. Yeah. What'd you find out about the Carlotti leaf? Nothing much. I was afraid of that. Well, where do we go from here? Search me. They try to reach those pedals, Bobby. I can't. Can you move that seat up? Nope, this is as far as it'll go. How tall are you, Bobby? Five feet four. Why, what's on your mind? Well, that farmer took a lot of pains to tell me the driver of this car was a little guy about five feet four. He couldn't have been. Look, I can't even reach these pedals. Yes, I see. Bobby, I've got a job for you. What is it, General? I want you to go out to that farm and see what you can find out. Tell Grimes, that's the old fellow that owns the farm that you're a reporter. And listen, get me some photographs. Autographs? Never mind. <gasps> and I'm going to have every person that Second National Bank checked over. There was inside help on this robbery somewhere. Maybe we're not so bad off after all. Let's hope you're right. You're from the Hanson Burglar Alarm Company? Yes, sir. You were called here yesterday to check over the alarms? That's right, sir. Who requested the checkup? I don't know. I was told at the office to come here. Uh, did you find anything wrong with them? The alarms were in perfect condition. Nothing wrong with them. All right. Do you mind waiting a few minutes? Yes, 
Mr. Harrington, do you know who ordered that checkup? I didn't. It must have been Mr. Curtis, our head cashier. He looks after such matters. Could you ask him to come in, please? Tell Mr. Curtis to come in. You're positive that repeated efforts are made to sound the alarm while the holdup was in progress? Certainly, Mr. O'Connor. A number of our employees tried to sound the alarm, but it didn't work. You wanted me, sir? If you please. Yes. Did you ask to have the emergency alarm system checked up? Why, yes. Why? Was there anything wrong with it? No. It's a procedure I follow at this time every month. Just a precaution. All right. Mr. Orwell would like to speak to you a moment, sir. Send him in. Is that all? Yes, thank you. This is Mr. O'Connor of the Department of Justice. Mr. Olbermann, our head bookkeeper. How do you do? Mr. Olbermann, my investigation here, I've run across something that seems rather funny. What do you mean? Well, we know the burglar alarm system refused to work, but I happen to have discovered that there were two men here yesterday checking it over. That's what puzzles me. There's never been two men on that job before. Never? Not to my knowledge. The first one was this man here who comes every month, but the second one I never saw before. Do you know anything about that? No, sir. I was the only man from our office that was sent here yesterday. Could you identify that second man if you saw him again? Yes, I think so. Well, I guess that's all for you two gentlemen. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Not much to work on, Mr. Harrington, but we'll do the best we can. A fine kind of detective you turned out to be. I hired you two months ago to get me a divorce. You either get me that divorce. As you promised, or I'll come back here and I'll take you apart. I'll tear you to pieces. Bob. What in the world? Oh. oh. So it's you. Well, you see, I sort of got the idea of trailing around with you and Alan to open up a private detective agency on the side, but, but it ain't turning out so good. Uh-huh. Go on. Oh, I took some of them correspondence school instructions, and now I got myself in Dutch on a couple of blackmail and Beecher promise cases. You know, this private detective ain't what it's cracked up to be. What about your job in the paper? Oh, I just uh, do, do this at night. Look, come here. I got this fixed up if I ever get in a tight place. Oh. That's, that's how I that's that's how I get tough with my customers. <laughs> hey, listen, I forgot. <laughs> Sometimes I have a little trouble getting it stopped. <laughs> Looks like you're trying to make it tough for yourself. <laughs> my mistake. <laughs> oh. Oh. I forgot. <laughs> that's my trick rug. I get it. You're starting to be a halfwit. <laughs> Isn't that a dandy? That won't hurt you. Get me out of this thing. Oh, the nutty ideas. <laughs> My mistake. You're not studying to be a halfwit. You've got a diploma. Oh, good. Skip it. How would you like a real job detecting? What did I do? Just get your camera and come with me out to an old farm. What's that? Bees and spiders. You like them. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. Hurry up. O'Connor? Well, I've got something. Yeah. Right in the bag. Come over to the office tonight, and we'll have this case broken higher than a kite. Yeah, about nine o'clock. So long. I... There's nothing to be afraid of. I hope. Come on, let's take a look at the barn first. Get off the stilts and 
try walking on the ground, will you? Bobby, let's get out of here. Shh, be quiet. But I'm scared. No wonder that farmer's board was never picked up. There wasn't any. What do you mean? Look. Those tire marks were made by a big car. Take a picture of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hurry up. Hurry up. Let's get out of here. I'm not myself tonight. Yeah, I've noticed the improvement. There's just one more place I want to look at. Where? The house, Rembrandt. Come on. Oh, now I know I'm sick. Happened. Call a doctor. Get the fingerprint men and the photographers. Yes, sir. happens once is a chance. When it happens twice is a certainty. Come on, let's get out of here. Hurry up. I'm coming. Well, Doctor? Killed instantly. Mr. O'Connor. Yes? Found these clipped together in his pocket. Suppose they mean anything? like Overman doesn't usually carry around a couple of $50 bills with him. I'll keep these for the time being. They'll stand a little studying. I'll have to take the bodies down to the morgue to uh, get the bullets, Mr. O'Connor. Give me a full report, will you? Yes, I will. Find anything, Doc? Nothing yet. Bobby, come in. May I sit down? Sure, make yourself at home, kid. I just heard about Macy. I'm so sorry. Yes, they got Overman, too. They'll certainly stop at nothing. Macy must have had them dead to rights. That's why they had to get him out of the way. It's the only way I can figure it. You, you mean to say they come right in there and, and... That's right, Bulb. You're not safe anywhere these days. Well, I'm gonna be safe. I'm going home. Well, don't forget to close the door. What did you find out? That farmer's name should have been Baron Munchausen. Why? Because the honor he gave you was a phony. What do you mean? We found the tread marks of a big car in the barn. You'll never pick up that Ford because he didn't own one. And the rest of his story was just as reliable. Looks like it. You know, he must have left right after you because by the time we got there, the place was deserted. Did you find anything in the house? Plenty. Take a look at this. Carlotti's again. That's the second time we've gotten a lead to that place. Carlotti's. That's our spot. Where'd those fifties come from? Oh, found them on Overman, the bank clerk. I was just checking your numbers here when you came in. Anything wrong with them? Not much. Only the serial numbers are exactly the same. 
Can there be two bills with the same numbers? Not a chance in the world. Look, L196-78400. L196-78400. Notice anything queer? Why, no, not at first sight. Well, here, look more closely. These numbers are among those listed here in the Lone City bills. Only the serial letters are different. Why, they must have been changed. Sure. This B could have been changed from an L, and this Q at the end of the letter must have been changed from an O. A neat bit of embroidery, I'd say. It's one of the most masterly jobs of counterfeit engraving I've ever run across. Then Oberman must have found them and was going to show them to Macy. Certainly. If Oberman had them, then they came from the Second National Bank. Say, maybe they'll be after you now that you've got those two bills. <laughs> yeah, maybe they will. And that gives me an idea. But what about Carlotti's? Where does that fit in? That young lady is what we're going to find out. And that's your problem. Now listen to me. I could give you a dozen other reasons, Mr. Carlotti, why you need a publicity agent. But I don't need a publicity agent. Look, I've been in the newspaper game for years. I know all the ins and outs from A to Z. You may not realize it, but you're an important man in this town. Think so? Sure. But the public want to know more about you, about your club. This is the age of publicity. And what are you doing about it? Well, I... Nothing. You've got a measly little sign outside. Now, if you'll only give me the chance, I promise that every time anyone picks up a newspaper, you'll have a new friend and a new customer. What made you quit the newspaper racket? Oh, I'm so sick and tired of it. Either you're on your feet or behind a typewriter 24 hours of the day. And for what? Naturally, I want nice things just as well as any other girl. Oh, I see. And you expect to get these nice things by handling my publicity? I know it. If you'll only give me the chance, and if after two weeks you don't like me, well, you just don't like me, that's all. Suppose I think it over and let you know. Thanks, Mr. Carlotti. I won't move two feet away from my apartment until I hear from you. You'll hear from me. Fine. Au revoir. Bye. Hey, we don't want that gal hanging around here, Joe. Shut up. Let me have the city desk, please. Since when are you telling me what to do? Hello, Morell. This is Joe Carlotti talking. See, there was a girl just in here looking for a publicity job. Bobby Reynolds. Said she'd been working for you. Been working for me about eight months. Smart girl, all right. Okay, Morell, thanks. The trouble with you, Duke, is you take life too seriously. She'll be using that back office, so have it cleaned up. Well, you're the doctor. Well, what do you think? Obviously, one of those bills has been altered. But it's the cleverest job I've ever seen. You sent for me, sir? Yes. Overman had these two bills in his pocket when he was killed. We think they came from this bank. Can you throw any light on the matter? Why? Why, these two bills have the same serial numbers. Yes, we know that. But can you give us any idea how Overman got them? No, he said nothing to me about it. Hmm. Well, I guess that's all. Thank you, Mr. Curtis. You see, it was just an accident, Mr. Harrington, that whoever altered this bill just happened to hit upon the identical letters and numbers of another bill. I don't suppose there's any way to check up on who deposited these. I'm afraid not. Well, that's that. <laughs> just the same, I have a hunch these two bills are going to break this case. Well, let's hope so. Good day. Jerry, it's the grandest show of the year. The loveliest flowers, the kind you never run across back east. Will you go? Hey, I'll be glad to go. I tell you, this federal man's got dynamite in his hand since he picked up those two bills. Why didn't you watch the numbers when you changed them? How could I? It was just an accident that the two showed up together. Now we are in a fine mess. We can't go after the whole Department of Justice. No. Overman discovered them in your deposit when I credited your account. He also found out that I held it over for a couple of days to change the numbers. And this federal dick, O'Connor, suspects that... What was that name you said? Whose name? That federal dick. O'Connor? O'Connor? Alan O'Connor? Yeah. Sure thing, dear. Out there. Goodbye, sweet. Goodbye. <laughs> Say, are you crazy? I may be crazy, but if you want those bills, I'll get them for you. I guess maybe I am. Telephone, Mr. O'Connor. All right, thanks. Hello? 
Yes? We want those two bills, O'Connor, and no monkey business. Either send them general delivery to James A. Clayton, C-L-A-Y-T-O-N, or we'll get your sister. Trace this call, quick. And listen, don't have the post office watched, or it'll be just too bad. Hello? Hello? What's the matter? We're getting hot. That was a warning to drop our investigation at those two bills or they'll get K. K? Well, they won't get K. Or the bills either. Well, the call came from pay station out of town. No way to find out who made it. Hmm. Bobby, you and Tracy get over to my apartment right away. Be careful that nobody sees you. You stay there in K's place. Tracy, get a couple of men to escort my sister over to Miss Reynolds' apartment. You stand by and watch my place. Right. I have a hunch they'll walk right into this one. I'll see you later. Okay. I'll get there as quick as I can, Bobby. Oh, Bob, you better go with them. Wait at Miss Reynolds' apartment with Kay. What'll I do there? Try tap dancing. Yeah. What? Go on, get going, get going. Look here, Kay. Come here. Come here, sit here. Sit here. Now, 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 put your arm up. That's it. Smile. Smile pretty and hold it. Don't move, Kay. Oh, boy, that looks better than Whistler's sister or mother or whatever it was. Now, don't move. Show your personality. Your teeth. Oh, beautiful, magnanimous. Oh, that's gorgeous. Beautiful. Now, hold it and I'll count three. One, two, Three. Oh, Kay, what do you think we'll make? Well, I have to answer the phone. Hello? Oh, hello, Alan. Hello, Kay. How's everything? Are you afraid? Well, don't worry, because nobody knows you're over there. Oh, I'm not afraid, Alan. I'm having the time of my life with Bob. He's so cute. It's you and Bobby I'm worried about, though. You're taking all the chances. Well, never mind about us. You stay right there in Bobby Reynolds' apartment till I come and get you, understand? <laughs> sure, it's all right to take pictures. Hey, goodbye, sweet. You men all ready? Sure, a fleet couldn't get into this building without us noticing it. Good. Well, I don't think they'll try anything until they find out I didn't mail those bills. We'll get going. Right. You scared, G-woman? Why, of course not. But now I know how a piece of cheese feels waiting for a mouse to pounce on it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, sit tight. Goodbye, Bobby. <laughs> Good luck, Alan. Now, give me your right hand. Oh, holy smoke. Kay. What do you see? Oh, boy. <laughs> A strange man is coming into your life. You're right about that. <laughs> but he's no stranger. <laughs> I think I'll call him right now. Get me Gladstone, 7161. What are you going to do? You can't do that. You know what Mr. O'Connor said. What harm can it do? Ellen knows him. Yeah, but... Uh, May uh, I speak with Mr. Turner? You got me saving up for a two-week nervous breakdown. Well, hello, Kay. How are you, dear? Bored to distraction. Cooped up in an apartment all evening because of some silly kidnapping threats they sent my brother. Yes. I can't stand it any longer. I'd love to go out for some fresh air. Why, sure. Nothing would please me better. I'll be right over and take you for a little ride. Here's that report you wanted worked up. Thanks. Let's see, Andrew Butler, William Barton, Leon... Here we are, Leon Curtis. Born in Serbia, 1889. Came to America in 1925. Changed name to Leon Curtis. Real name, Leon Schwartz. Trade, master engraver. Employed by Second National Bank as cashier. Present address is 439 Hope Street. Master engraver. And Curtis could have changed the letters on those bills. Perhaps he was the inside man on that robbery. Call a squad car. Will you meet me out front as quickly as you can? Yes, sir. Ooh, what hit me? My head. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Give me some aspirin. Uh, 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 give me, give me an outside line. Hello? What? When? 
I'm not sure. I just woke up. They came in and grabbed Miss O'Connor and, and clucked me on the head. But how in the world did they ever find out where she was? I don't know. She did call a friend and invite him over. Who was he? What was his number? She didn't say. I was only trying to entertain her when she grabbed her pocketbook and called some number. Here it is. It says, Jerome Turner, Gladstone, 7161. Say, if you're coming by this way, will you bring me something for the bump on my head? Wait till it gets as big as an egg and then hatch it. It hurts. This guy McGarren operates too fast to suit me. I told him to lay off that girl, but it's too late now. Well, maybe we better lamb out of town. Pipe down. When I want your ideas, I'll ask for them. See who it is. Well, they're right on our tails. All right, slow down. We'll take it easy. Now, what's it all about? Well, I just got in my place and I heard men coming down the hall. The house manager was with them, and I heard him say, this is the place. Well, keep your shirt on. They haven't caught up with you yet. Barney, fix him something to steady his nerves. All right, go on. There isn't much more to tell. I climbed out the window, up the fire escape to the roof, and jumped across to another building, and I didn't stop going till, well, here I am. That was a very smart stunt. If they'd followed you here, we'd all be in a jam. The best thing we can do is to get out of here as quick as possible. Barney, pull my car around to the side entrance. We'll meet you both there later. You two go out this way. May well, I come I... in? Why, hello. I was just going to give you a ring. I thought of giving up hope of ever hearing from you. Well, I've been awfully busy. Say, you look kind of down the mouth. Why shouldn't I? I'd counted so much on getting that job. What makes you think he won't get it? Then I'm hired? Sure, why not? Boy, that's the best thing I've heard today, mister. By the way, have you ever been to Vancouver? No. How would you like to go there with me? You know, just for a starter. I don't get it. Well, I'm leaving tonight to pick up a dance team and an orchestra, and I thought, you know, Maybe you might like to go along. Why, I'd love it. Would you? Well, we're driving up the coast. When do we leave? Right now. But I, I can't go in these clothes. Uh... Why not? You can pick up what you need along the way. All right. But this is a little sudden. Well, we'll only be gone a couple of weeks. Do you mind if I call my mother and let her know that we're going? No, but make it snappy. I have some people waiting. This isn't Harry, it's Bob. Uh, this is Bobby. Tell Mother I'm going away for a few weeks. Tell whose mother? Yes, dear. I'm going away with Mr. Carlotti. Carlotti? Holy smoke. Listen, Bobby, you can't... Of course it's on business. That's a fine way for a brother to talk. Look, I ain't your mother and I ain't your brother. I don't know what you're talking about. Say, you ain't been drinking, have you? Why, of course not. Listen, darling, you tell Dad not to worry about me, and I'll call him later. Yes, dear. Goodbye, and be a good little boy. You go ahead and engage a room. I have some business to attend to in the neighborhood, and I'll see you later. All right. So long. I don't like the idea of bringing a girl along, boss. Oh, forget it. Drive on. All right, all right. Then what happened? Well, Mr. O'Connor, all of a sudden she goes over to the telephone and calls this fella Jerry Turner. Half an hour later, there's a knock on the door. I answered the door and he's standing there with another guy. <laughs> I goes over to shake hands with this Turner bird and boom, he socks me one. Yes? A swell guy. Well, well. Then after a while, I get this call from Bobby. And she's stiffer than a gangplank. You must be out of your mind. Now look, Mr. O'Connor. When anybody mistakes me for their mother, she must be drunk. Listen, Bob. How long do I have to wait before you tell me what happened? But you won't give me a chance. All right, dear Bob. Nice, Bob. Sit down. 
Now, come on, tell me. Tell me in your own words. Yeah, then Bobby said to tell my dad that she's gone out of town with Mr. Carlotti. Who did you say? Carlotti. Carlotti. I should have known better than to leave you here. I started to give it to him, but he hit me on the back of the head when I wasn't looking. I'll take it. Hello? Yes. Bobby, where are you? Wyandotte, what are you doing up there? Carlotti dropped me off here, said he'd be back later. He was with two men. Good. Wyandotte's on the way up to that farm. It's my hunch that's where they're going. And it's my hunch you'll find Kay at that farmhouse. What do you want me to do? Listen, you stay right where you are. I'll be there within an hour. Carlotti shows up, you keep him there. Right. You stay here. Oh, please, Mr. O'Connor, you can't leave me out now. Stay here. Oh, I'm, I'm going along. Hey, Carlotti. It's Carlotti. I wonder what he came down here for. Maybe he likes the sea air. Hiya, boys. Hey, what's up? Plenty. I came after that dough from the bank. And I'm clearing out of town until this thing blows over. Well, how about the O'Connor girl? She's McGurn's worry. I didn't know he was going in for that angle when he said he'd get those bills back. Not that he got them back. Listen, Carlotti, get your dough and clear out of here. If that's what you came out here for, I'll take care of my end of it. Get the money, Duke. All right, Bob, I'm going on out to the farm. You wait here with Bobby till I get back. Who, me? Nothing's going to happen to you. Now go on up and hide in the corner. All right, John, we can go. Curtis, get rid of that engraving equipment before you leave. I sure will. Now the rest of you can clear out as soon as you like. Hey, Eli, going with you to Vancouver?